let's bring the whole Safari inside our app to display web pages, browse the web, or to fill username and password. No, it is not your web view or web kit. It is much easier to use with this new API. It is called Safari View Controller. SF Safari View Controller. Hey everyone, it's the founder of Developers Academy. We will teach you how to become iOS developers to design create prototypes and develop the world's most beautiful and powerful iOS apps with stunning animations and delightful transitions. You are watching Coding Out episode number 26. In this video, I want to show you how to use the SF Safari View Controller that Apple just introduced and display your web pages without the user having to leave your app into Safari. Also have all the features that Safari provides us and the beauty of Safari. So let's dive into it. The first thing I want you to do is go to the link right down below, download the starter project because inside the starter project there's a lot of things I already do for you that does relate to this project and sets the background for us. And as always, if you're watching this off Developers Academy's website, go stay with the link and enter your name and email there so that I can send you a freebie. As always, in every episode of Code Hangout, I have a new iOS course prepared for you to give you to learn so much more about iOS development. It is our new course and I want to give it for you for checking out Developers Academy's Code Hangout. So let's download the Star Project and let's get started. All right, so here's our starter project. I hope that you already download your starter project inside your email. Um, when you look at the starter project, there's a lot of things going on here. The reason for that is I use this project a lot uh, in Code Hangout and also Developers Academy's programs. I hope that you will join us someday. But let's focus on this. What we want to do here is when we click into this cell over here, it will show up as a something called as SF Safari View Controller. Basically, it is a Safari inside your app. And later on after this, I will tell you a little bit the background, why we want to have Safari inside our app and why it is the best for you to start adopting SF Safari View Controller in your app. Okay, a lot of uh, popular apps already adopt uh, Safari View Controller, so you should do it too. Now, what we want to do is go into the courses Tail View Controller, which is the first class in the controller group right here. And then just scroll down into the mark of UI Tail View Delegate. So what happened is when we click into a row, when the row is selected, we will display the SF Safari View Controller. It is a normal view controller and we can display it modally. Okay, so let's do this. Let's have Tail View and let's select Row and Index Path. Okay, so we want to check, uh, we want to get the let's program equals program sub index path dot row. Okay, um, let me have override over here because this is a UI view controller subclass. So whenever you want to have any delegate or data source method, you have to override that. Okay, if you have a tail view outlet inside your controller, then you don't have to have that override. All right, I have that question a lot, so I hope that it makes sense for you. Now first, we'll get the program, the selected program from the uh, from the controller, from the data source. I mean, this one, because I have the I have the data source to be the programs, and inside each program, we have a lot of courses. Now, if you are not familiar with Tail View, data source in Tail View, then definitely enroll in Total iOS Blueprint. And have a link right down below for you. So so how you familiarize yourself with tail view and a lot of diagrams, a lot of strategies inside iOS. Okay. Inside this one I have index path subsection. And then we have the program and we'll have the URL of the program to be program.url. Okay. What we want to do is display this URL, which is a string. You don't now I already have a show website method over here. So let's call that method self.show website and pass in the URL. And so this show website we will display the SF Safari view controller. What we can how we can do this. Well let's do that. Let web 
view controller, we can do let's web VC is an instance of SF Safari view controller and it has an initializer that will need to provide a URL. Now how we can get that URL? We can get that URL, let's uh, URL equals NS URL, URL, and then string, okay. The string is this URL. I think we have to ungrab it because it returns an optional URL. And then over here, we will return to pass in the URL. Cool. And then our last thing we want to do is just display this web view controller by using present view controller. And this one we will present this view controller modally. It will take up the whole screen. Uh, pre present view controller, web VC, animated is true and completion is nil. Just like that. Now let's run the project to see how it looks like. Here we go. All right, so here's our project. Let's click into this master, the Swift programming language, or let's scroll down and see what's, what's it like. How to build an Instagram feature app. Click into that, and we go into our um, web page. Now, one thing you notice over here, we have the URL of the web page over here, right? And then when you scroll down, maybe let me find a button, a link somewhere over here. Okay, I click into this one, and it goes to a different website. Now, when it goes to a different website, you look down, in, looks down, you can have the back button, you have the button to share with some friends, okay? You also have a button, so we click into that and it goes back into Safari, or you can click into done, and we are done with this, okay? So we're done with that. Now, one last thing I want to show you is the SF Safari View Controller Delegate. So let's have that. Um, over here we have WebVC. Let's have the WebVC dot delegate to be self. Okay, so we have the self to be the delegate of the web view controller, which is a Safari view controller. Now let's scroll down, way down here. Oops, I think I, the font is too small for you, right? Luckily is we didn't have a lot of code in here. So all we do from start is just have this, okay? And then have the website. All right. Now, when we go down, way down here, I want to have an extension, and that extension will extend this causes tail view controller, causes tail view controller, and it conforms to SF Safari view controller delegate. So when we have the SF Safari view controller delegate, we can do something like Safari view controller um, did complete. No, Safari view controller did finish, okay? So when this one did, did finish, we want to do something like controller dot dismiss view controller animated to be true and completion is nil. Now this one, Apple recommends us to implement this one to dismiss it from the, the uh, root view controller, from the view controller, so we should definitely do that. Okay, there are other methods inside the SF Safari view controller delegate, so definitely check it out. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is when you want to use the Safari view controller, SF Safari view controller, remember to import the Safari services, all right? If you don't import that, it will have an error and you will find some Google around, okay? Or you just remember to do this, Safari services, cool? So now let's run it once again, and I will have a last few words with you about SF Safari View Controller. Let's click into one of those things. Uh, this one. Okay, click into that, and it dismissed like this. Cool. Now, one of the things we want to use SF Safari View Controller is it has all the functionalities, all the interactivity of Safari, of the Safari app itself. And you see the, the the number of lines of code you have to write is so minimal. But you, some may say that, okay, I can reuse web view controller, uh, web view UI, web view. And in fact, when you look at our star project over here, and by the way, we are already done with this, but 
when you look at the web view controller class this one I use a UI web view with a progress bar and it's the same one when you click into this click into the block one the block it also displays the web page it also has the progress bar but the number of lines of code instead of just five you have to, we have to do it like 100 lines of code yes you can reuse that yes you can um, use the same class all over again but there's some problem with this the first one is you don't have the full function when you click to a link let's say socialize your apps program you cannot go back okay you doesn't have the functionality to go back into the previous web page if you want to do that you have to use something called a um, web kit UI web kit but there's a lot of coding involved the second thing is that there's not security here security is an important thing if you want to log into some websites let's say you are logging into developers academy websites it doesn't auto complete your um, password and username it doesn't remember that because apple doesn't allow us to access keychain inside that but with sf safari view controller you can access the keychain you can have the password and username auto field use email there with you don't have to implement anything five lines of code okay it's incredibly powerful when you use something like oauth oauth usually when maybe maybe you want to access to facebook okay they use the logs into facebook and then or instagram you have to display facebook or instagram website and then they use the logs in but with sf safari view controller you just have to show that with five lines of code the username can auto fill the password and username and we are done now some may say that we can use safari takes the user from our app to safari but the problem with that as you may know that when the user goes from your app to safari there is like 80 percent i don't have the accurate statistics but there are a lot of chances the user is distracted when the user is distracted they will leave your app in here. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial. I'm so honored to have you here with us. Remember that you still have another tutorials, another course that I prepare for you to learn so much more about developing iOS apps as a surprise, as a freebie for you when you enroll in this Code Hangout episode. As always, comment right down below to ask any of the questions that you have in your mind. I will be happy to answer your questions. Now, if you uh, share with us what would you like to use SF Safari view control in your app how this tutorial helped you and then after that goes into your email back and check out another email for me that contains the link to your video into the course that I prepare for you so stay tuned and I see you in the next code hangout until then go out there every single day of your life learn new things craft your ideas and contribute to the world